Attention. Music. Experience. Well, the 60s psychedelic age was when we nearly escaped because at that point, the predominating power on earth, which is not very benign, had not realized the potential of music and poetry and newly evolving medias like you know, recorded music and so on, uh, to um, open up society in a way that it had never been uh, experienced before. So it was, a, it was a flowering, it was a flowering of everything that is beautiful in uh, spiritual and, uh, you know, psychedelic life. Welcome to Psychedelic. And in those days, the musicians actually had a lot of control over what happened. The businessmen were running after the musicians. And, uh, and of course, that all changed. It became the other way around. And you got today, like your Simon Cowell's, decide who's going to be the next star. It's the businessmen run it all now. And, uh, you know, people are pumped full of... Um, basically um, manufactured music which is you know just it's just produced in factories uh, like all the other things produced in factories but in the 60s there was a whole flowering of culture which was not mass produced it was coming from the heart and there was also a, a wave of optimism coming out at the end of the second world war that we were all riding together and that optimism was building up, and if we were all, everyone was influencing everyone else. That's why they, people always say, you know, why are your songs not as good now as they were then? The point was that nobody's songs were as good now as they were then, really, because we had each other with two. We were all getting inspired by each other back in those days. There was a huge amount of inspiration. There was a huge amount of optimism. There was some kind of hope that we would actually come into a dawning of a new age a golden age and of course that hope hasn't died but it's been more or less uh, you know taken out of the mainstream media that's a good question I wish I knew the answer to that because if I knew the answer to that I'd have solved my life's main problems because in fact all of us who who are we you know what are we is a constant um, inner dialogue between ourselves and us and another power we're not independent beings are we we, we have guidance within us some people call it uh, intuition some people call it the super soul everything else in the in the universe we're under a constant state of change so you're really trying to find what is that basic self that um, where you come to, to a state of peace and you come to a state of satisfaction because there's not the only thing worth attaining is a state of satisfaction no material thing is really worth attaining and this is why often you find that the nicest people are farmers, simple people who live in the country, who maybe don't have a lot of material things, who depend on God and see God in, in their day-to-day -day life. And um, I see myself as uh, probably a cosmic farmer, you know, um, a psychedelic farmer. <laughs> Grow a few flowers, <laughs> write a few songs. <laughs> and give praise to God, you know, because it's all coming from a power beyond ourselves. 
So we're servants. We're, we're, we're servants of a, of, a, of a superpower. And, uh, you know, the best thing, the greatest leader is the greatest servant. about some of the um, some of the songwriters who inspired me was the political element also I studied politics in university I don't believe we have the correct political system for a higher civilization we're living with a political system which is out of date it, it depends upon constant economic growth and the earth cannot sustain constant economic growth the, we need to uh, develop a new civilization that does not need to be constantly growing like a tumor in order to be healthy. We need a civilization that's balanced, that gives back to the earth what it takes out and more. We should hand to our descendants more than we take. Unfortunately, we're not doing that at the moment, although there's a lot of awareness of how we should try to improve. Personally, I don't think we can improve without it going back to the root. For instance, recycling and all that. I think you have to go right to the root and you have to not create things that, that are hard, impossible to recycle, you know, difficult to recycle. When I first went to India, if you ate, it was on a plate made of leaves and when you'd finish, you threw it on the ground and it went back to the earth. You drank from a cup made of clay. This is human culture. Simplicity is human culture. Complexity doesn't really lead to happiness. It, complexity, like all of us are now becoming aware, is hard to deal with. Too many choices. Strange that I think that there's something wrong. Captain's log, the first of June. I think we're, we're approaching the time when, the, when the, the, the 60s flower power revolution is going to become a reality. Now ordinary people are beginning to doubt it too. Ordinary people are actually, actually seeing that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not uh, reliable. It's not reliable. So uh, they're ready to listen a little bit, I think, to uh, some of the answers that we already... I say we, I mean the, my leaders had in the 60s. And uh, those were the real answers, you know, back to nature, living simply, uh, living in balance with the earth, and living in peace and love, um, flower power, all the good stuff. Grow your own food. You know, you need a little bit of land, you need to grow your own food. It's not a mystery. It's not hard to do. I, not that you have to be totally self-sufficient. We, we have to help each other, support each other. But everybody should have some kind of a connection with the land, even if it's just to go down to the farm once in a while and, you know, buy some produce. But it works better on a small scale, all this big industrialized farming. I know they think that that's the only way you can support this huge population. But actually, a huge population can easily be supported if people are vegetarian and non-violent. You need far less land than to sustain a meat diet which involves a lot of violence. It's not that there's not, there's also a place for small scale hunting as there always was for certain cultures. If it's, in, if it's fair, if it's in balance. You, you know, the animal has to have a chance to kill you, please, Mr. Hunter. You know, Mr. Hero, Mr. Big Man with a gun. You know, you're not my macho man, you know, uh, Arnold. Uh, <laughs> because, because I'm the one who's gonna be back, man. And I'm coming with flowers. <laughs> And there's a whole lot of us coming with flowers. Because we don't believe in your macho man culture. You know, it's gone too far. And, 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 and it's a whole nuclear thing. Even if all the countries of the world come together and ban nuclear now and work on trying to clean it up, we still probably can't clean it up. It's, it's horrendous. So that's what we have to do. The countries of the world have to come together to clean up the nuclear holocaust. Stop it completely. Shall I go on? I don't think I'd rather stay 
Captain's log, first of June. We run into a bad monsoon. I'm 54, I sailed before. This is not the sea, it's war. This is not the open door. And to those who cause us pain, I only hope you might remain. I'm going down with all that's good. I wouldn't stay if I could.